how high should you be able to play based on your age, the grade that you're in, or maybe even how many years you've been playing the horn. That will be the discussion today in our trumpet lesson. And it's very interesting. Um, I've, over the years, I get lots of comments that kind of go like this. Hey, I'm in 10th grade and I can play a high C. Is that good? Or what's another one? I just started playing trumpet and I'm able to get an E at the top of the staff. Is that any good? So that's the way that people tend to ask the question. And they say, is that good? <laughs> so I always get a kick out of that. So we're, we're going to have a discussion today, and these are going to be ballpark averages, um, mainly based on my observation over quite a long time of teaching and playing, and even myself, and I'll give you some exceptions. So the first exception um, to what I'm going to be talking about would be my own son. If you search my channel, you'll notice that uh, I'm sitting out on the balcony in my San Francisco apartment and I'm testing out a new horn. It's actually not a new horn. Um, it's a um, con, oh, whatever it was. It was a vintage horn. But I'm playing outside the fire escape. And you hear, if you listen carefully, you'll hear something in the background that's kind of helping me out with the filming. And that was my son. That particular year, 2012, he turned 10. And I got him excited about getting into band. And I've got him a horn and everything. And we had our, I gave him a couple of lessons. The first time he picked up the horn, he messed around with it, and he was able to go up to an E. Now, it wasn't the best quality E, but it wasn't a squeak. I mean, it had some, some meat on the bone. I was shocked. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I had him start off on a G. This, this note. G or are two perfect notes for any beginner that has never touched the horn. So he played that so easily, I said, well, can you go a little higher? And he kept going up until finally he got to the E and he was really turning red and pressing it, pressing it hard. But it came out kind of loud. I just, I just shook my head. I thought, that's incredible. Um, unfortunately, now my son seemed to have some natural talent, maybe even more than me, but he didn't dig the horn. So I think his fifth grade year, he played through one semester of band and music class and then ditched it. That was pretty much it. Uh, at that time, he was really into baseball. Uh, and what else? What else? He got on football a little bit. So he's more into athletics. But uh, he just had the natural ability that I didn't have. To put that in perspective, I didn't have that strong of a high E until maybe midway of my junior year in high school. Can you believe it? I'm not joking. I mean, that was a strong high E he played. And it was about, I was about 16 and a half years old before I had an E that would come out that good. Okay, now, so let's start at the beginning. Um, maybe you're, I'm going to talk kids for right now, not, not beginning adults. But maybe you're in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Maybe you're a late bloomer and you're in seventh grade. And you're probably between the ages of nine, maybe eight, but probably nine up to maybe 12 or 13. Let's call that the beginner, maybe almost intermediate range. But let's just say that, that you're a beginner at one of those stages and you just picked up the horn. So I think your first note should be, uh, that you should be able to play, should be a G. That's the second line G near the bottom of the staff. I think every human has the natural musculature to be able to play that, be able to play a lot higher. Now, all of you have the ability to play The G right above the staff, or sitting on top of the staff, all of you naturally have the strength to play that, but the reason that you would not be able to do that at the beginning might be because your technique would be off. But natural strength for a, natural, for a normal human, um, as a beginner, you would have the strength to be able to play the G um, up right above the staff. But I don't want you to fret or worry or get disconcerted about that. that you, that's going to come easily. But for right now, if you're in, if you're just starting band, here we are. We're almost into August 2022, so band might be starting for you. Maybe you're starting for the first time. Uh, anyway, so if you can play a G at the, in the bottom of the staff, second line, you can play a C. 
You're doing good. Now, if you can get an E, that would, that's just one note above the C, almost near the top of the staff. Um, I would say you're doing a little bit above average. This is for a pure beginner and someone in the age range. Now, adults are different. For example, an adult male who's 35 years old and going to start, well, he's just naturally going to be a little bit stronger. Bigger lungs, bigger muscles, bigger throat, bigger everything. So you can't compare a beginning 35-year-old male to a 9-year-old girl, for example, that's just starting. The, the anatomy is just too different. So we're talking about kids right now. Okay, let's move up the ladder. So you're not a beginner, but you've been playing for a couple of years, and you're wondering how well you're doing. So let's say that you're an eighth grader in a middle school, which would put you at the top of the class, or maybe you're an eighth grader in junior high, or let's also call it uh, a ninth grader in junior high. So that means you're still in the the the, uh, the lower level school. You're not in the high school because they do have some ninth graders that are not in junior high that are part of the high school program. We're not talking about that because when you're up at when you're a ninth grader in the ninth through twelve program, you tend to be pulled more and pushed. So you you might actually do a little bit better. But if you're at the top of your class um, as an eighth grader in middle school or a ninth grader in junior high. I would say, based on my experience, if you could play a G, or an A, you're doing really good. And how do I know that? Because that's kind of where I was at. And um, as an eighth grader, ninth grader, I was a ninth grader at Hawkins Junior High in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I also went to Knox Doss Junior High, and I was an eighth grader there in band. And so my range kind of hung out right around there. G, maybe A, but not always a usable A in a piece. But I mean, I, I could make it sound decent for a little bit. That actually carried carried me through um, some solos, some concerts. I made, oh, what, what did they call it back then? All Middle Tennessee Mid-State. I think they call it Mid-State, Tennessee Mid-State Band. It's not All-State, it's Mid-State. So it's kind of a little area right around there, uh, Middle Tennessee area. Uh, that's Nashville, and then you drop down to Murfreesboro, and, you know, kind of right around. You have to look at the map. You know, I haven't, haven't been there for quite some time, but that's what it was. And so in ninth grade, I had a pretty decent G, maybe an A. I, was, I would say that A wasn't always there, but it, it sounded pretty good. Now, in my own private practice, at that time, I remember I could hit the high C, but it wasn't usable, and it sounded kind of like... Kind of like that. So it was maybe MP, maybe if I killed myself, it was MF, but I was crushing the mouthpiece to my lips and turning red and getting lightheaded. So in my own private practice, I couldn't squeak that out, maybe a little bit more than a squeak. Uh, but it wasn't usable in anything that I could do in band or any solo. Um, so anyway, that's where I was at. And I've noticed along the road that I've taught different people, um, There's that seems to be kind of right around the average. You know, if you're in ninth grade, you probably can hit an F or a G or an A, and you're probably doing pretty good. Now, there have been some exception, exceptions. Um, I remember when I taught at a middle school in Federal Way, and the director's name was, was it Tom Jacobus? Dang it. I can't remember now. Uh, geez, it's been so long ago. Long, we're talking like 30 years ago. I think there's a band director, if you're from the Federal Way, Washington area, Seattle area, and you know the name Tom Jacobus. Now, he may not even be alive, because I believe back then, he, I think he was late 40s or early 50s. So that's 30 years ago. So he may not be around anymore. But I remember there was a kid in in, um, in either 8th or ninth grade there, like somewhere right around there, who was actually able to get up to D's and E's um, as a ninth grader, 8th grader, ninth grader, which was very, very unusual, not typical. So anyway, that's, that's uh, I'm telling you right now, if you're an 8th or ninth grader, you can play a nice, pretty sounding G, full sounding, pretty, in tune, right, at, right on top of the staff, maybe an A, you're actually doing pretty good. Maybe average or a little bit above average. You're holding your own. Okay, let's move up to high school. 
So the high school, there, there's quite a quite a spectrum and it ranges of, of high school. Um, average players, and let's just say slightly advanced. I'm not going to go to your real advanced players like I got to be when I got to start making Allstate and really, I'm self-taught when it comes to my high range. Um, we're not going to go into all that, but I did do kind of a quest to find out. I remember this is back before internet. I, I did a quest to find out who could help me with my high notes, and and uh, there really was no some nobody that I found that specialized in the upper register of the trumpet. So I started messing around on my own and, and came up with a lot of things that helped me out. So going back to where you might be, let's just say. Let's just say that you're 16 years old and you're about ready to start your junior year this year. Let's just say right now, it's two, summer of 2022. We're almost in August. You're probably going to be starting band here in a week or two, maybe band camp or some extra band stuff. And yeah, you're basically starting school in two weeks and you're 16 years old or almost 16. You're going to be a junior. If you could be hitting a decent... High C, B flat, B, B natural high C, uh, but I would say you're doing pretty good. About like that. Pretty sound, centered, in tune, a little bit of kind of big, brassy. And I played those right around MF. So if you could play MF, maybe a little bit louder, you're doing pretty good. Maybe slightly above average, okay? So you should feel good about yourself. You should feel like whatever you've been doing has been working. If you've arrived at this point in time, and even if you're watching this video in the future and it's not 2022, let's just say it's 2028, but you're you're the same shoes as this person, this figurative person I'm talking about. It's six years, this video is six years old, but it's the summer and you're 16 years old and you're starting as a junior, it still applies. This is kind of universal. If you have can play and have a B flat, B natural, or high C, you should feel pretty good about what you've been doing because what you have been doing has been working for you. Uh, okay, so you should feel pretty proud. That's a good range. You can play quite a lot of repertoire. That would also mean that your endurance is pretty good for a lot of band pieces. Unless you get into an audition-only type of wind ensemble in your high school. Now, a lot of high schools don't have that second band. They have a, they'll have a concert band. They have the marching band, the concert band, and maybe a pep band. Some of them may have a jazz band. My school didn't have a jazz band. So I didn't really know anything about jazz, even just the playing of it, until I got into college, which kind of handicapped me a little bit. But um, I made up for it that first year because uh, I ended up practicing like six hours a day. Uh, no, that's, that, that doesn't include rehearsals. Uh, I got I got to um, the, the belly of the Clement building where all the practice rooms were underneath the stage and everything. And I would get there 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And uh, for the most part, I'd be practicing there till 11, sometimes midnight with some breaks. And so that freshman year, I about killed myself, but I made up, I made a lot, up a lot of lost ground. So back to our discussion on range and age and where you should be so okay i just mentioned that about the uh, audition only wind ensemble or let's say symphonic band something like that if you now if you have one of those and there's advanced players in that then we're going to change the range a little bit so let's just say that you're a senior you're about ready to start your senior year in high school and your high school is a bigger high school, and it does have that audition-only wind ensemble band. Or maybe it's not audition, but your band director kind of has to pick you and allow you to be in that band, something like that. And then you do a chair test to see where you are. So that's going to be uh, a more vigorous and higher level band to be in. The caliber of music typically will go up to four or fives and maybe even some sixes but definitely hanging around grade fours and fives. Uh, some pretty tough music. May, and maybe sprinkling in every now and then some grade six music. You will definitely have some high C's to play. Now the thing about it is, you have to have more than a high C range on your trumpet to be able to play those because of the endurance factor. So you might say, oh, I, 
I already have the high C, no problem. Well, in some of these pieces, you 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 play constantly, especially if you're doing a march or something like that. Uh, but you're playing constantly, you don't have a lot of break, and, and then at the end you might have to hold out eight measures of high C's or something like that. Um, so you can't just have a high C. You have to have a higher range than that to be able to play those notes. So I would say if you're, it's the summer before your senior year, and you're more of an advanced player, let's just say you're 16 or 17, somewhere right around in there, maybe 18, but somewhere right around there, and you're getting ready to start your senior year of school, and you're kind of an advanced player, and you're going to be going into the, the top band at your school, you probably should have a strong D or E. So, D or E. Yeah, it should sound like that. Now, that was a good forte. Maybe even maybe fortissimo D and E. And so now you're not probably going to see D's and E's in your high school music because I know I didn't see too much of that. I saw it in the marching band music, I saw it in the pep band music, but in our wind ensemble, I didn't really see those notes. But you need to have that range so you can have the endurance to play the notes you're going to be required to play in a more competitive band like that. And let's talk about just for briefly why you need to have higher range because endurance is a byproduct of range and this is going to be something that's opposite of what you're going to hear from the people with all the degrees so for example if you if you're in middle tennessee and you're studying with whoever it is that's the the trumpet professor at vanderbilt i'm confident they're going to tell you the opposite they're going to tell you just to practice more practice more practice more practice more and you'll get your endurance and don't worry about that range. The range will take care of itself. Does this sound familiar, especially for people that are out of high school, that have tried to study with people that are recommended because they have the DMA or they have the MM after their name? Those guys got, almost always have it all wrong because they operate on theory. And they're operating on what their DMA professor told them. So these guys operate on theory. They don't really operate on the, the fact that they can actually step out and play a truly difficult high note solo and make it sound good because they they don't do it they sit there and count rests in the in the symphony if they play in the symphony they count rest if, if you're let's just take this theoretical example of a trip profe, trip professor but if i bet if i went and double checked it's true whoever that is right now at vanderbilt university or belmont if they if their principal trumpet in the national symphony i guarantee you they count more rest than they play you need to be a good rest counter. And what they do play is not going to be anything taxing. A little fanfare of this, a little fanfare of that, a couple of whole notes, that's it. So when they tell you, don't you worry about the range, little Johnny. It'll take care of itself. You need to practice more if you want good endurance. That's 100% wrong. You need to increase your range over the tessitura of the music that you play to have a big jump in your endurance. And to put it another way, if I was hiring you to come play in my band tonight, and I said we're playing a four hour gig, 45 minutes, 15 minute break, 45 minutes, 15 minute break. I want you to come in, but guess what? Here's the kicker. The highest note that you gotta play is a low C. Could you do it? Are you gonna worry about endurance? Are you going to worry about your face falling off after four hours of playing? You are not going to worry about endurance. Why? Because endurance is a byproduct of range, and your range is surely two octaves higher than that low C. Are you get me now? Is it starting to come, come up here in your brain? Are you waking up? Put away the chatter that you've heard from these people with these advanced degrees that really don't know what they're talking about. If I want you to play in my band tonight, and the highest note is a low C, you can do it. And the reason you can do it is not because you're practicing 10 hours a day. The reason you could do it is because your range is so much higher and endurance is a byproduct of range. That's it. Now, let me hold the hand of these guys that have spent all the time in the library and doing research. You know who I'm talking about. These are the MM guys, the DMA guys. 
and they haven't spent much of their time playing. In fact, ask some of them that ask some some of them to be honest, and they will be on, the honest ones will tell you if they have any regrets about getting their DMA, it's the fact that they didn't get to play too much. They spent a lot of time researching and writing. The honest ones will tell you that. So they didn't spend a lot of time on this. Now, you do actually have to have some playing time on your horn. Just because you can pop out a high C uh, doesn't mean that you can play forever on, on any note below that. So I would also like to add this to that equation. I like to be able to at least have uh, a parallel comparison. So for example, if I have a two hour rehearsal and I know all the range is only going to go up to high C, but I have a double C, I'm good with that. But I still would like to have him practicing two hours a day. You know, just that just makes sense, right? So if you have a if you have an hour concert for your for your Christmas concert, you can look at the schedule when you get into band and you're in high school. Or you're just say you're in college, but you have a Christmas concert coming up, you know what it is, you see it. And that you know that your part that you're going to play, you're going to be in there for probably about 45 minutes. So at the very least, you should be solidly never missing practicing 45 minutes to an hour every day. In addition to having your range way above what's required um, in the pieces that you will play. I promise if you do that, you're going to be good to go. Your chops won't fall off. You won't have any problems. So use that formula. And that most of us pros don't have the luxury of just playing for 45 minutes usually it's going to be a couple of hours and um, usually if you get um, wedding gigs they don't go for a couple hours they they always go close to four hours it just seems that's just been my experience they start at 10 and go to two they start at nine and go to one and you play for 45 minutes and you get off for 15 so there you need to have built up three to four hours of practice every day and your range surely needs to be five steps higher than whatever you're going to be playing on that gig. So anyway, let's go back to our analogy now in our discussion. This is very important. So it was a sidestep and a little exit road off of the main theme. But I'm confident if you go back and rewind this, you'll know that it's very important that I just talked about this. This endurance and range with um, endurance being a byproduct of range, which is the con contrarian view I'm probably in a very small camp of people, maybe I'm the only one that uh, really knows that this is the way it works. And your people with your advanced degrees who don't really play too much on this, or they play the orchestra and don't play hardly at all, they spend their time counting rest and looking at their phone and stuff. No, those people don't know. So let's move on. Now you're into college. And let's just say that you're a sophomore in college, you're 19 years old, maybe you're 20, and you're wondering what range you should have. And you're, let's just say you're coming up around the first part. I'm not gonna talk about your third part players. Your third part, third trumpet players and third cornet players in most bands, you can get away with a lot less than what I'm talking about here. In other words, you could be below average and you can play the third part, you're gonna get by. I'm just talking about um, average first trumpet players for the most part. Uh, that uh, that starts around the middle school and the high school range. In the, in the elementary, what we first talked about at the beginning, you don't really have so much first, second, and third. You know, you're playing all those band books and things like that. So anyway, you're in high, you're in college, and you're going to be playing the first trumpet part. Maybe you're going to get a solo. Could be marching band. Pep band has some higher stuff, some rock stuff, and then now you have the jazz band. And usually most college jazz bands are not going to be watered and wimpy. They're going, the, some of them will have the real McCoy uh, jazz pieces. Like if you have a Buddy Rich jazz piece um, in the, um, in your repertoire, it's probably not going to be watered down. So I'm trying to think of one song that, um, oh, now I can't think of the title. I'm thinking da 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 what song is that? <laughs> I forgot the name. It just slipped me. But anyway, it's just an example only. When you get into college, you're probably going to play in the real McCoy and not a watered-down piece that you probably would have had in high school. They water down a lot of stuff and dilute it, lower the range, and take out the tricky rhythms and just make it easier for high school kids. In college, most of the time, you're going to be getting the real thing. And so now things change. 
So if you're a 19 year old sophomore or a 20 year old sophomore um, at a typical university or college and they have at least one jazz band, hopefully they have more, but let's just say they have one jazz band. I'm not talking about a quintet. I'm talking about an 18 piece big band jazz ensemble. Now, you really would like to be able to have E, F, maybe G. G would be sweet if you could. But certainly you got to have the E and the F. So E and F, if you had that, you'd be doing pretty good. There's a lot of pieces that do have the E's and the F's. Uh, that you're going to be able to make pretty good use of. Some of those charts that you're going to encounter do have a double G, so uh, you could probably take that down if you can't get the double G to come out. But by and large, if you're a 20-year-old, in fact, if you're 20s and you're a sophomore, you may not even be having the lead part. Um, you might have a 22 or 23-year-old senior who's um, able to do all that. So, But if you had a nice solid E and an F, and you're 19, 20, sophomore in, in college, and you like playing the first trumpet part, uh, I would say you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. Uh, let's let's move on now to the probably the most advanced player at the college level, and this could be your senior who is 21, 22, 23, or it could be someone in, that's in your school that's getting their master's in music ed or master's in performance or their DMA, Doctor of Musical Arts, but they're still there. I mean, they're maybe they're they're playing in the jazz band or the top jazz band at the school. So I'm talking about those players. Um, so if you're a top caliber senior trumpet player at a college or university, um, or you're, you're returning as a, a graduate student in music or DMA, now you really should have the G, the double G, and double A uh, notes uh, on your horn. You really should have that. I mean, it, come on. You, I mean, if you're actually, you know, a senior, and maybe you're you're getting your band director degree, the music ed. Maybe you're getting the music performance. If you're a graduate student, you're getting a master's of music ed or performance. Uh, those levels, if that's going to be your profession. You need to have already figured out this horn and be able to play a double G and a double A on the horn uh, for many reasons, for the jazz band, for rock band. But hey, you're going to be playing some piccolo trumpet stuff. And your piccolo trumpet stuff, you need to be able to have those notes so you can sound better on C, D, and E, which a lot of the broke music does have a lot of, in, uh, when you transpose it to uh, B flat trumpet, uh, of course, it's written. Um, it's written. It's written um, one whole step lower, but when it comes out to our note on B flat trumpet, it would be high C's and D's and E's. Are very common. Um, high, with high D um, for for a B flat trumpet being very very common, just playing it. So you need to have the G and the A. double G and double A. And the way I just played it, I would be confident to say that's a good FF, fortissimo double G and double A. And I don't know if you know this, but I've been talking all this time and I haven't been playing. I actually didn't warm up uh, before playing. And so I'm just pulling these right out of the air. So <laughs> not like I'm testing out the notes or seeing for intonation. So, uh, but anyway, I just, I'm just, I'm just letting you know that these notes are probably not going to come out perfect. And then I'm recording on my phone, so I'm not, I don't have my trusty little Neumann TLM 103 to make everything sound more authentic. It's being everything be filtered to the little cheap um, microphone on my phone, so it's probably not going to come out with the greatest quality. But anyway, you should be able to figure out that it was pretty loud. So we're all, that's pretty much it. Now. So we've kind of reached the, the, the other end of the spectrum. We started off, you know, 9-year-old, 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12, beginners, where they should be. And now we've arrived at the other end of the spectrum 
where you you need to have a solid solid base i mean if you're going to be an example to other people other younger players people with the, at, at a level lower than you you have to have that good example of done doing everything on the horn but the best example you can have is to have achieved a strong amateur and a lot of people put the cart before the horse and they'll they have their technique down and they're able to play different etudes and they can do this and that, but they don't have any range. And as far as I'm concerned, for the most part, those people have failed. There are the exceptions. Let's take Chuck Baker. I would say he's an exception. His range really sucks, but he was just a kind of a jazz genius. So he made up for it that way. But I guarantee you, you're probably not Chuck Baker and you probably don't have that natural gift that he had. And so you have to have the range on the horn. Okay, you have to have the range on the horn. Let's see what else. So that's pretty much it, folks. Now, if we want to talk about adult beginners and adult players that haven't been in school or have or comeback players, you need to just take what I said and kind of ratchet it up just a little bit. If you're an older player who hasn't played in a while but you're coming back, you can take these averages and, and maybe add a note to each one. To come out with what you should have so I've had some comeback players start the course and they can't play a G without passing out I mean I'm talking about a high G that sits right on top of the staff I mean they it sounds almost unbelievable right but there are people out there that are 65 70 75 80 that have started my comeback player course and it's just like I mean, if you held a gun to their end and told them to play higher than a G, they couldn't do it. So I don't know why that is. Uh, it's got to be technique. It's got to be they're, they're, you're on the wrong equipment. Maybe they have health problems. So there's there's a, some of the uh, some of these things that we just talked about get skewed when it comes to comeback players. Uh, so most of the comeback comeback players I've had tend to have been very weak. Uh, when they come back, their their range tends tends to be very very weak, uh, weaker than than what is typical for the levels we just talked about. So weaker than a ninth grader, for example, in school. And I don't know that exactly all the reasons behind that, but health might be one. Maybe their health has deteriorated. They didn't touch their horn for so many years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years. Um, they're playing on crappy equipment, so mouthpiece too big. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. And uh, I feel that there's a lot of value in here. If you felt that you gained some value um, out of this discussion and you can kind of see where you fit in, maybe this motivated you a little bit. Maybe you're just a little bit under some of these averages and you'd like, you know what, Kurt, Kurt kind of prodded me a little bit. I think, okay, I'm... I'm a top high school player and senior, and I don't quite have that high CD. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to really try to get it up there. I, well, I hope that's what happens, that this kind of motivated you a little bit. I'd like for you to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. You've heard a million times that supposedly it helps YouTube push it to other people. They push it to other people, and of course, I made this video for free. I want you YouTube to push it to other people so they will see it, and then, of course, you'll see my website down in the link below trumpet sizzle.com and if i would want you to go there and see if there's something there that you think might actually help you i'm quite confident i have something on my website that would help you whether it's just lessons with me whether it's just me reviewing some of your videos i can do that or whether you want to get involved in the, the quite a myriad of courses that i already have and most of these courses are very proven by hundreds and hundreds of other people that have come before you so also what we just talked about should have generated an interesting dialogue with people watching it so I'd be interested to hear your take on it um, I, I like neutral to positive comments if you're a troll and providing a lot of hatred and vitriol I'll probably delete you but if you want to leave a comment and you disagree slightly or you disagree and you want to kind of frame it in something realistic and just polite, I'll leave your comment on. On the other hand, if you agree and you think what I said rings true, then go ahead and leave that. So leave a comment below about what you just heard in this video. 
Uh, let's see what else. And then, yeah, there, there's a little couple little buttons there. If you want to help support this channel and this video, you can add a little cha-ching. That helps go a long way for someone who tends to work most of the time for free. <laughs> if you look at all the videos, I got over 2,000. They were all done for free, folks. So, yeah, it's like kind of like the starving trumpet player and starving artist uh, syndrome here. So, you know, if you're a software engineer or a lawyer or an accountant, you're watching this and, you know, you, you want to chip in a little bit, I will accept it. That will be appreciated. So anyway, I'm going to put some other videos that you may like, uh, might be interested in. You'll see them pop up on the screen here in a bit. And then if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, one benefit is you'll, when I put, I've, I've been making these posts too, not a video. There's a little a community section where I can make a post, an announcement. You may want to see some of those. So if you subscribe, you'll get notification when I make a post or put something I think is important. And of course, you'll get um, the heads up for new videos that I'm going to do. So Kurt Thompson, trumpet player. The site is trumpetsizzle.com, trumpetsizzle.com. If you're in a generous mood and you mood and you want to help save music and you want to contribute to our society, I do run a nonprofit called Trumpet Champions. The website is trumpetchampions.org. Trumpet Champions with an S dot org. And you can go there and make a donation and contribute to a good cause um, to help music and help we're trying to get a band put together to to not only help the general public but also go into some underserved areas and turn on turn on people who are only used to listening to um, hip hop and rap and just some other junk music and let them hear what real music sounds like live. So we're, that's part of our mission for trumpetchampions.org. But if you're in the gener generous mood and you want to help out, um, that would be also appreciated. All right, it's summer of 2022, and today, whew, it is supposed to be a hot one. Uh, what are we? It's Wednesday the 20th, July 20th, 2022, and they're calling for 105 degrees. Uh, we've had a heat wave this summer. It's been hot, so I hope that you are enjoying your summer, or if you're watching this during the winter, I hope you're enjoying building your snowman. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.